episode 3288, Did Curiosity Really Kill the Cat? Moms, it's time to rediscover, rejuvenate, and renew who you are in mind, body, and spirit. Welcome to Create Your Now, Your Best Selfie, the show to help you do just that. Here's your host, certified life coach, personal trainer, and nutritionist, Christiane Wargo. Happy, happy day. It's Friday. Yay. Whew, you made it. Can you believe it? Yeah, no, me either. It has been a really long week. Actually, it's been a really long winter, and we still have months to go. So, let it all hang out. It's Confessions of an Upset Mama. Did curiosity really kill the cat? Let's dive in. For those of you who are brand new to Creature Now, welcome to this incredible family. I'm so delighted of your presence. If you already even had the opportunity, you'll want to head over to creaturenow.com where you can learn more and sign up for the Kisses newsletter, the Keep It Simple Strategy, Everyday Solutions to Live, Love, and Impact. Well, this episode is brought to you by AIM, inspiring connection and community. We'll take a deep breath because, woo, Creature Now is having some major changes happening. Yes, we are expanding our TV audience. I am excited to announce that we will be on Inspiration Ministries here starting February 4th, that first week in February. And so that is exciting and all that we're going to be able to bring around the globe, specifically our TV show. Now, remember, we've got the TV show and the daily podcast. So you're listening to the daily podcast right now. We can go to pray.com, eventually createyournow.com because we're revamping it. So all the shows will be on there. We'll have it on YouTube also for those of you who just kind of want the ease. You like YouTube. I get it. And then we've got pray.com and the actual TV broadcasting center. So we will have all that information as we continue to update our website. I truly appreciate your patience because let me tell you, it is a beast to get it all together. But exciting things around the quarter, including opening up AIM. So stay tuned for that. It is something you're not going to want to miss and you're going to want to get in at the very, very beginning. Plus on top of all of that, my travel and conferences and just really listening and leaning into what the Lord has in store. Yes, I'm writing a book and maybe even a trilogy. Oh yes. Let the mystery begin. All right. With that being said, what are you really doing in your life with your kids? Like seriously, have you sat down and gave a reason to your madness on how you raise your kids. Now, I know most of us aren't sitting around the dinner table going, hmm, what do I want my children to be like? How do I get them to that point? Because the way we nurture them, the way we raise them, the way we discipline them, the way we speak to them, our tone, our vocabulary, our interactions, or the lack thereof, it all influences our children in a very unique way, right? And each child is so different. You can have one child that's a social butterfly and then you have another one who's like, "Uh, just leave me in my little hole. I'm fine. I'm very happy. Now, when I want to, I'll talk to you, right? You can have that, you know, two ends of the spectrum. But you have to realize too, there are some commonalities in raising kids because kids today face numerous challenges and pressures, but they also possess an incredible capacity for curiosity and wonder. And as parents, it is our responsibility to foster and encourage this natural curiosity. So did the curiosity really kill the cat? Hmm, I know. You know that saying, right? Curiosity killed the cat. It's one of those head scratching sayings that you're like, really, where did it come from? Well, the origin is somewhat mysterious. However, over the years, the saying has evolved and become more widely used, emphasizing the potential danger of seeking knowledge and information without considering the consequences. So what does that really mean? Well, let's see. Don't you want to learn something new? Well, there are some people who really don't. And if you do not present them with that opportunity, they're fine staying where they are. But then you have those that it's like if you can create the landscape to where it opens up doors of opportunity, it serves the child in a manner where they can expand their curiosity. And so when you think about how this potential danger, and I'm using air quotes right now, of seeking knowledge and information without considering the consequences It's a cautionary reminder that excessive curiosity can lead to unfavorable outcomes. Now, you've got to look at this from the aspect of age appropriate. You're not going to tell a three-month-old to jump off a cliff, nor are you going to tell them as a three-year-old to jump off the cliff. If they're a 30-year-old, maybe they'll make the decision to jump off the cliff. 
right? All within different ages, all kids, yes, even the 30 year old, because a 30 year old has a mama and a daddy too. Okay. Just saying, I have a mommy and a daddy too. So I'm still a kid. We're all kids. Just some of us wear bigger clothing than others. But when we look at all of this, we've got to look out for our children. Just because it's popular in culture and that it's well known doesn't mean that it's a fact. Did curiosity really kill the cat? I mean, doesn't anything we do with our children deserve to be scrutinized, but also marveled at the same time? I know it's kind of going against it, isn't it? Against all odds right there. You're like, wait, wait, scrutinized and marveled. How can they be both? Well, curiosity can be positive, but it also can be negative. So you as a parent, right? And myself, we only want what's best for our kiddos. Well, I'm assuming that. And if you're listening, most likely you are. Yet, if we don't let them explore and expand their knowledge, what happens in the long run? Nothing much, no growth, no innovation, no imagination, nothing, exclamation point. So stop being boring and overprotective and fuel your child forward. That is your kiss to keep it simple strategy. Fuel your child forward. You see, curiosity is a fuel that propels our children forward on the path of knowledge and discovery. Think about what has happened in this world, going into outer space. Think about the cell phone. Oh, a tablet, a computer. Wait a minute. Let's go back to a typewriter, a cassette tape. We can go back and look over time. What about a vehicle? Oh my goodness. A train, a semi truck with trailers, right? We look at all of this. If we did not have curiosity involved, would we be where we are today? No, we wouldn't. We have to be curious creatures. And God truly designed us to be curious. Now, yes, we want to do it in a safe manner. We want to protect our children. But having them kind of stuck in their own bubble, I know I was a mom of five. I get it now, grandma of two. And if I could have all of us on an island all by ourselves with just our family, wouldn't that be wonderful? I wouldn't have to worry about anything. But that's not real life. That's not anything that's going to protect us and how we can protect our children. No, we've got to allow them to be curious. We've got to allow them to grow and to pave their own path. So what does it mean to really fuel your child forward? Well, number one, create an environment of wonder. Children are naturally curious. Just watch them. I mean, moms, if you've ever carried a child in your womb, you know, they're curious, you know, they start out just so, so, so small. You can't even feel them. And all of a sudden you're like, get the, you know, what out of here, right? You know, you remember, let's bring on those past days. Okay. Maybe not. It's too much of a confession, isn't it? Okay. Okay. Erase that whole thought. It is fry. Yay. And we don't want to go there, but you know what I mean? right? Because they're exploring, they're tossing and turning. They're like, where am I? What is this? What is that? And then they come out to the real world. And then it's a major shock. Have you ever looked at your child's face? You know, I mean, it's amazing. My granddaughter, she's three months old and it is so adorable when she gets startled. I mean, her eyes are so big and she puckers up a little bit like, what was that? Now, of course, she's not saying that, but you can tell the wheels are turning, right? That is curiosity. She knows something's different. It's out of what she hasn't experienced. It's out of the ordinary for her. So as parents, we need to foster this curiosity by creating an environment that truly encourages questioning, exploration, and discovery. Let them find things out on their own. And I know... You want to be that helicopter or drone, whatever. What is it now? Maybe we're going to be moving to spaceships pretty soon, but I don't want to be a spaceship parent. That would sound really strange, but you know what? Providing access to books, right? Engaging our kiddos in conversations and exposing them to new experiences can truly fuel their imagination and ignite their sense of wonder. And let me tell you this, if we as adults would carry that wonder within our own everyday Imagine how our lives would be different. Jane Goodall said this, children are born with a natural sense of curiosity. It is our job as parents to nurture and protect the flame. Are you one who's saying, yep, I'm protecting the flame, but I'm sticking them in a bubble. 
I do not want anything to happen to them. So they're going to remain safe with me. Or are you one who say, no, I'm going to allow them to explore. I'm going to nurture them in, yes, a protective environment that still continues to ignite that flame. Where are you on the spectrum? Now, again, this is a no judgment free zone, right? I'm not telling you how to raise your kids. That's not what we're here to do. It's here to have serious conversations. So when you're with the dad of your children, or if they have a stepdad, or if you're raising your kids, I know many grandparents that are raising their grandchildren for whatever the circumstances, right? And praise the Lord, they're in that position. Wherever you are, however your influence is with your children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews, kids you mentor at church, or even in your own neighborhood, are you creating an environment of wonder? Number two, encourage risk-taking. Curiosity often leads to taking risks as children venture into the unknown in search of answers. And as parents, we have got to support and encourage the risk-taking behavior, even though it may make us feel uneasy. Now I'll say this, go back to the three month, three year and 30 year old, right? You're not going to ask a three month and three year old to go jump off a cliff. A 30 year old. Well, if I was that 30 year old, which I'm not by the way, but if I was, I would not be jumping off a cliff anyway. And me being from Hawaii. Okay. Cliffs are beautiful, but they're not made for me to jump off of right now. If it's just like a little jump. Okay. Call me in. Like I like puddle jumps, but I'm not going to sit here and be this daredevil of a woman and be just all crazy because you know what? I want to live a few more decades, just saying. So what is it for you? Are you encouraging that risk taking, right? Are you providing a safe space for your children to try new things? And yes, listen to the end, make mistakes because we need to help them build resilience and confidence and a lifelong love for learning. One of my mentors, Dan Miller, who just recently passed away, he was a lifelong learner. And let me tell you, I am too. And there's nothing more rewarding than to continuously learn. Now that doesn't mean that you're not working. That doesn't mean that you're not accomplishing things. That means you're always exploring, right? Did curiosity really kill the cat? Hmm. Sir Ken Robinson said this, curiosity is the engine of achievement. Now that's an engine, I went roaring. Yeah, that just like, ah, sign me up. Yeah, we got this. Encourage risk taking. And finally, number three, embrace open ended questions. Asking open ended questions can stimulate curiosity and encourage deeper thinking in children. Instead of simply providing answers, we should encourage our kids to explore different possibilities and come up with their own solutions, right? It's called critical thinking. But instead of using that big fun phrase there, Let it just be curiosity. Let them explore. Let them go on their own adventures and come up with their own solutions. Let them fall. It's okay. I promise you they will get back up. Now, of course you want to keep that safe space, but by engaging in meaningful conversations and discussing topics that spark curiosity, we can help our children develop critical thinking skills and this thirst for knowledge. And let me tell you, the thirst for knowledge will serve your child well, and it will serve you well too. Albert Einstein said this, it is a supreme art of a teacher to awaken joy in creative expression and knowledge. My friend, when you nurture curiosity in your children, you empower them to become lifelong learners and critical thinkers. We need more of them in our world today. So when you're sitting around the table, you've got family, and you're gathered together, those who are caring for your children, think about how each of them are adding to their curiosity of life. Or are they ones that are subtracting it, right? Are they adding to the sum of all? Or is it like, yeah, they're going to be extra. And yes, I get it. You want to be a little cautious. A three-month-old, you're going to be a lot more cautious than you are with a three-year-old versus a 30-year-old. But you still want to nurture that curiosity. So let's celebrate their inquisitive nature and provide them with the tools and opportunities to explore the world around them. Let's do this together. Go in peace, be present, be incredible, be you. 
I love you so very much. I cannot wait to see you on the other side. Blessings, hugs, and lots and lots of love. We'll talk to you real soon. Have a glorious, blessed day. Bye-bye. Feeling inspired, ready to train for life, and love your journey? Visit createyournow.com for more incredible resources to help you along the way. We'll see you next time on Create Your Now, Your Best Selfie. And remember, always be sure you consult your physician before beginning any health and fitness plan.